Hey, this is Peter Rosenberger. Do you know how to pray for someone? Do you know how to pray for a caregiver? Do you know how to pray for the person the caregiver is taking care of? What does that look like? Yeah, I'm sure you're like me and you've had people come up over the years when they encounter the drama in your life and something bad happened. Oh, we're going to pray for you. And then, you know, when the drama eases up, you know, we, we relax on that. We, you know, God really came through. But when the drama never goes away, how do you pray? I mean, it's relentless. When you're a caregiver, I mean, it's, there's no expiration date. I mean, it's, it's relentless. And I've had people come up when they see that, oh, we're going to pray for you. And I'm like, it's like going to the post office and they see somebody carrying a bunch of boxes and, brother, you look to be burdened down. I'm going to pray for you. Well, hold the door while you do it. I mean, and I think we can do that. We can learn how to address the physical needs as we do that. And we may not know what to pray. I don't know what to pray. I really don't. I, I, I look at Gracie sometimes and I think, how do I even pray? What do I pray? Do I pray for her to get a good night's rest? Do I pray for her to be uh, healed of her pain? Do I pray for her legs to grow back? I mean, what does it mean to God to do any of those things? I think the best model I've seen for this were my pastors. We were at the hospital one time when Gracie was having a procedure and it was, man, it was a brutal procedure. She was just in agony. I don't know if you've ever watched somebody in agony, but it, it is an unsettling thing to do. And there was nothing that we could do. And she was just she was just groaning, just groaning. She couldn't even articulate the words. And I listened to my senior pastor, and, and he groaned as well. My other two pastors, they groaned as well. The tears, the, they stammered and stuttered as they tried to get it out. But they kept pushing towards Christ. They kept looking to God as the source of wisdom, of comfort, of strength. They never took their eyes off of that, but they groaned, and I thought, that's it. Man, that's the key. We need to groan before the throne. I mean, I don't mean to be trite about that, but that's kind of a good way to remember it. We groan before the throne. Because the people that we're praying for, that we so glibly sometimes say, brother, we're going to pray for you, they're going to be back in that same post office the next day with a whole bunch of boxes. Again. Every single day, it never goes away. And we can't be glib about it. We've got to do things that are going to be meaningful to them as they struggle with this. We groan before the throne. And I, I thought, as I wrote the Caregiver's Prayer in my book, which is available in bookstores across the country, thank you very much. Oh, get over it. I thought, you know, how do I pray as a caregiver? Lord, as I glance backwards. See, that's the thing. We can't stare backwards. We've got to glance backwards. We tend to look backwards and just like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. No, no, no. We just glance. And as I glance backwards, may I see your provision. As I look forward, may I see your guidance. Help me to know what is mine to carry. And to remember that we have a Savior who laid down his own life for us just as we as caregivers lay down our lives for our loved ones. We put ourselves between them and disaster every single day. And He gives us the strength to do this. And He gives us the wisdom to know what is ours to carry. And just remember this. He has nail prints. We don't. We have a Savior. And that's very comforting. I'm Peter Roseberg. I'll see you next time.